Hello everyone and welcome to SIG Acronis third webinar. My name is Sanjay Markun and I will be coordinating today's session. First, I want to do a quick check regarding sound. Please write in chat if everybody can hear me well. Seems everything is okay. Great. So now we can start. I'm sure you will have some questions during the webinar. So please write them down in chat and we will address them later at the end of the webinar. Also, a recorded version of this webinar will be available on our website. This is SIG Acronis third webinar in the series of webinars dedicated to our SIDUR and CMAX brands. Today, we will talk about bending recommendations of SIDUR and CMAX segments of steel. Also, a quick remark. We are preparing one special webinar where we will talk about new CMAX steel grade from SIG Acroni. Everyone participating here will be invited to this webinar. Now let's do a quick review of SIG Acroni. SIG Acroni is a producer of flat rolled steel products. We are a part of SIJ Group, which is the largest steel producer in Slovenia. SIJ Group is vertically integrated business structure, which ensures complete control of value chain from scrap to the final product. Now it is my honor to let me introduce you to our main presenter, Mr. Andres Kumauts, which is our main research engineer for CMAX and Sidur Steel segment. Andre, the word is yours. Thank you, Andre, for this introduction. Uh, as it was already said, my name is Andres Kumauts, and I'm working as a research engineer for carbon steels and also as a research engineer for welding technologies of special steels. I was already with you during the first two webinars which were from the field of cutting and welding but today in this webinar we will give you some instructions and recommendations regarding bendability of CMAX and CDUR steels. So to summarize bendability, weldability and ability of thermal cutting are three main properties that are required for construction steel grades. And also CMAX and CDUR steel grades, which are produced by our company, so this is SIJ Acroni, belong to the construction steel grades because they are used for the most demanding structures like extendable boom lifts, excavator frames, trailer chassis, or different types of buckets. So in the beginning, we have to point out the main properties of SIDUR and CMAX grades. SIDUR and CMAX steel grades, they both have relatively high yield and tensile strength beside the impact toughness, which is in the range of conventional construction steels. And those properties are achieved with special chemical composition and through carefully controlled hot rolling and heat treatment process. Just, just a little bit, please. I will just change the screen in order to see the presentation. There are some technical problems. So those factors, so the special chemical composition, hot rolling and heat treatment process are also a reason that a little bit more care is necessary for cutting, welding and bending operations to be done safely. Also, in nine out of 10 occasions, high strength, low alloy steels are combined with conventional construction steels like S355 or S235 grade. This is, let's say, an important factor to know because especially when you are doing the welding operations of high strength, low alloy steels, 
together with low alloy steel grades. What we see on this picture is that high quality of the end products is defined by right choice of steel in combination with proper technological steps during the manufacturing process in your workshop. So the cutting, welding, and bending operations should be done according to the producer's instructions. Regarding on the equipment which is used in your workshops, I also know that some adjustments of procedures is always necessary. So SIJ Acroni produces three main grades of high strength, low alloy steel grades, which are made according to the requirement of international standard for high yield strength structural steels in quenched and tempered condition. Those grades have commercial names CMAX 700, CMAX 900, and CMAX 1000 with the corresponding yield strength of 690, 890, to 960 megapascals. Thickness and width of the steel depends on the quality of the steel. And what is also important that we can produce some other grades from this international standard according to, to the agreement with the customers. For example, for really small orders, we can also produce CMAX 550 grade which is not that widely used grade compared to, let's say, CMAX 700 grade. All those grades, so CMAX steels, are typically used for the applications where strength to weight ratio of the structure is of great importance. For example, typical products are extendable boom lifts, trailer chassis, frame of the yellow good, and agricultural machinery. Before starting with the bending recommendations, I think it's important that we make a short overview of our SIDUR steel grades. So SIDUR is SIJ Acroni commercial name for the wear resistant steels. And we are producing steels with a nominal surface hardness from 300, 350, 400, 450, up to 500 Brinel. And all those grades, are delivered in quenched or in quenched and tempered condition with the martensitic microstructure. Under the name SIDUR 3401, we sell the 12% manganese austenitic grade, which is also used for the application with the extreme wear. This type of steel is also called Hetfield steel, and the main property is the increase of hardness during the operation of the steel. And this phenomena is called the work hardening effect. Also for SIDUR grades, the maximum plate thickness depends on the particular grade. So typically, SIDUR grades are used for the wheel loader buckets, excavator buckets, mining equipment, tipper boxes, and different hydraulic equipment, which is used for yellow good machinery attachments. At this point, I have to give you one important information, which is also shown on this slide. So internally in our daughter company, which is called SIJ Electrode Esenice, we are producing also the welding materials in the form of the coated electrodes for stick welding and massive or cord wires for gas matter alg welding, which are all necessary to weld the plates of our steels into the final products. So let's go to the webinar main topics. So in this webinar, we will try to point out the main steps to be followed for successful bending. So we will start with the material properties that have the highest influence on bendability. In the second part, we will go through, the, through all the steps which should be followed prior to start the bending operations in your workshops. Additionally, we will also explain the air bending and V dye bending process. Somewhere in the middle of the webinar, I will just briefly explain the spring back and how to avoid or minimize it. I will also show you some examples, uh, some examples how edge quality affects the bendability. And in the last section, we will also make two examples how to select, let's say, suitable punch radius 
regarding on the tables from our catalogs. And just to remember you, you can also watch the previous webinars if you click the new the, the tab News and Media on our webpage and then you follow the link webinar. So if we take a look on this small wheel loader bucket, which is shown on the bottom of the slide, we can observe that this product combines different steel parts. All, or let's say most of them are first cut from the base plate. Then the next operation is bending of cut parts into the final shape. And at the end, they are welded into the final product, which is, as mentioned, the wheel loader bucket. So among material forming processes, the bending is the most widely used. And if material is bendable, it means that it is capable to withstand plastic deformation. If material is bendable, we can also produce complex shapes, so complex finished products from one single plate instead that we are doing the welding process of multiple pieces. And of course, the bending radius also has a direct effect on visual appearance of the final product. So in industry of yellow goods, mining equipment and high strength structures, the bendability of the construction still is considered as the main property that shall be fulfilled. So on this slide, for all of you who are daily in contact with the bending operations, it is necessary to explain the main points on this stress-strain curve. Stress-strain curve is a line, let's say, which we get during the tensile testing of our steel plates. And this curve with the shape and also the main points is specific for each individual type of steel. So on horizontal axis, we have strain and on vertical axis, we have stress. We can just simply say that on vertical axis, we have the force which is necessary to deform the steel. And the yield point, so the yield point of the plate defines the force which is required before the plastic deformation of the material starts. It means that the higher the yield point, the higher the forces that are necessary before the plastic deformation starts. And second important value, or let's say parameter, is the plastic deformation. So the higher the plastic deformation, the more complex parts we can produce of particular steel grade. And plastic deformation also defines the maximum angle that can be achieved during the bending with particular bend radius. On horizontal axis, we also have the elastic deformation, which defines the spring back, uh, the, so the spring back after the bending process. And this is when the loading force is released from the material. But we will come back to this spring back a little bit later. On this slide, I would just like to show you an example of two different steels. So we have two stress strain curves. The green one is a stress strain curve of CMAX 700 grade with the typical mechanical properties according to the, star, uh, to the standard requirements. And the ability for cold forming, so the bending is correlated with the elongation and for this steel, it is approximately 14%. The next curve, which has completely other shape, is a stress strain curve of austenitic steel. And compared to CMAX 700 grade, we have yield strength of only 240 megapascal, or it is just 30% of CMAX 700 grade. On the other side, we also have much higher elongation, so more than 60%. It means that much lower forces are necessary when bending austenitic grades compared to high strength low alloy steels. And also the maximum angle that can be achieved with particular bend radius is much higher when bending austenitic stainless steels. So let's go or let's check the steps that are necessary before bending operations. When we are talking about cutting and welding, 
I'm sure that some of you still remember that we met, that we go through the main important points. For example, we check the minimum preheating temperature prior to welding operation. And also in this webinar, we have to go through the main points that are necessary for successful bending. The first step is to check the rolling direction. So the marking on our SIDUR and CMAX steel grades is always aligned along the longest edge. So this edge is also the rolling direction of the plate. And if possible, the bending should be positioned perpendicular to the rolling direction. Bending in this transverse direction is also called the easy way bend. Then the next step, you should also check the surface quality of the plates. All imperfections like deep scratches, rust and scale imprints can work as a crack initiator during the bending or can also increase the bending forces. And if they are present on the area of bending, it is better that they are not positioned on the tensile strain site. As it was already discussed in the cutting webinar, thermally cut edges from plasma, oxyacetylene or laser cutting should be all removed, deburred and rounded using the angle grinder. In case of, let's say, very hard steels like SIDUR 500 grade, the heat affected zone due to the thermal cutting process can be very hard and therefore can act as a crack initiator when the bending with really small punch radius is used. The next thing are tools that are used for the bending. So they should be as hard as possible in order to minimize the friction forces during the bending. So the higher the hardness of the supports, the lower forces necessary for bending. Then something about the storage of the material. We all know that the material can be stored also outside from the workshops. Problems can, let's say, appear during the winter when the temperatures are, are relatively low, so below zero degrees C. And in this case, you should move the plates from the outdoor storage into the workshop at least 24 hours before bending. With this step, so with the moving of the plates into, into the workshop, you can effectively minimize the cracking appearance. Some of you would, let's say, maybe just like to know if it is necessary to preheat the material prior to bending. Normally, it is not necessary or required. But if you will preheat the area of bending to approximately 100 degrees C, this step will have a positive effect on bending and almost no cracking is to be expected. So first, we will check the air bending procedure. Air bending is, I think, the most widely used process for bending. In this case, we do not have any special tools, just one punch with the removable and changeable punch radius that can be used on different types of hydraulic presses. And what we need are also adjustable supports, which should be made of really hard material, so harder than the plates that we want to bend. And during this process, the material, which is in the form of a steel plate, is plastically deformed by pushing of the plate with the force of the punch into the supports. The bending angle and bending radius are defined by the geometry of the tools. So what we have to point out is the bent radius. So bent radius, the letter R, is half of the diameter. We as a steel producer normally give the final users some tables where this parameter R regarding to plate thickness is, I think, clearly defined. So during the air bending process, we get plastic deformation. What it means? It means that one side of the plate, which is in tension, elongates. And on the other side, we have the, the side which is in compression. Somewhere on the middle of the plate thickness, we have so-called neutral axis. 
in case when you have some imperfections on the plate, like I already said before, like scratches or deep imprints, the poor side, so the side which has all those imperfections, should be in compression zone during the bending process. The bending force during the bending can be approximately, really approximately calculated using this equation which is written on the slide. We just multiply the bending length, the thickness square, and tensile strength. And then we divide this result by die opening width and number 9800. And what we get as a result is the bending force in tons directly. So, in order to better present the required bending forces, we have two examples of the bending force calculation. So the example is made on CMAX 700 grade compared to very resistant grade SIDUR 450. Both plates have the same thickness and the same required bending length, and also the same tool opening. As you can see, the required force for CMAX 700 grade is approximately 110 tons. On the other side, we need almost 200 tons for SIDUR 450 grade. So the higher forces for CMAX 450 are necessary due to the much higher mechanical properties regarding the CMAX 700 grade. The next, the next process is the V-die bending. This V-die bending typically requires custom tooling. So it means that for each bending radius, unique die and unique punch is required. This process is particularly suitable for large scale production. So the large scale production means that we have to bend multiple pieces of the same geometry and of the same thickness. Due to the special tooling and special bending machine, the investment into the equipment is I think a little bit more expensive compared to conventional air bending procedures. So in this process, we just push the material into the V-shaped die. And the process of bending is finished when the punch and die, let's say, come together, of course, with this intermediate plate. And this type of bending is normally not practiced on the plate, on the plates with relatively low, um, it's normally practiced on the plates with relatively low thicknesses. So mostly we can use the V-die bending on CMAX and CDUR grades with the thickness between 6 to 12 millimeters. So let's check the spring back effect. Some basic background about the spring back was already explained at the beginning of this webinar. Spring back is a geometric change when the part is released from the forces of the forming tool. And this phenomena always appear when we are doing the bending process on the metallic material. So it is seen during the V-die bending and also during the air bending operation. So spring back is measured in angular degrees. The higher the mechanical properties, in particular the yield strength, the higher the spring back after the bending. What it means? It means that conventional S355 grade has lower value of spring back as let's say CMAX 1000 grade. It is hard to exactly define how to overcome this, this problem. We can, we as, as the steel producer can only give you some instructions, let's say. Mostly people in the workshops use the so-called overbending. It means that if you want the final angle of 90 degrees, you should overbend to approximately 100 degrees. And please note that spring back and overbending angles should be practically tested in your workshops because this phenomena also depends on the tools used for the bending in each particular workshop. We have to explain a little bit the stick slip effect. What is actually the stick slip effect? It is an unwanted phenomena during the bending procedure. 
So for better explanation, we will take a look on the following diagram, where the bending force during the punch move is shown. We measured the forces during the bending operation of, on some of our plates. As you see in those red circles, are sudden drops of the bending forces. This is, I think, much more frequent phenomena at higher bending forces. So the reason for this sudden bending force drops is in friction forces between plate and supports. And if we use soft supports, let's say just from conventional S355 grade, and we are doing the bending on CMAX 1000 grade, this is something that is to be expected. So if we want really smooth bending with low friction forces, we have to assure following three things. The first one, we have to use hard supports. So harder than the material that we want to bend. Then the second step, die supports which are in the form of the cylinder shall have free rotation when the plate is pushed into the support. And the third one, we can also use the lubricant in the form of the grease or let's say oil. If all those three factors are let's say assured, we will have smooth bending and also the necessary bending forces will be drastically reduced. As shown during this presentation, I think that bending of the material is not an easy task. There are numerous factors that should be taken into consideration before bending. What we have on this slide is that I would just like to show you some practical examples from the real uh, industrial conditions. So which factors are, let's say, the reason for unsuccessful bending? So the first one is definitely the quality of the cut edges. So the edges that are not smooth can work as a crack initiator. So before bending, please check the visual appearance of the edges and if necessary, prepare them as smooth, really as smooth as possible. Then as you may be experienced in your workshops, sometimes during the bending process, you can get really tiny cracks on the tangent side even though the suitable bending conditions were used. These small and tiny cracks can result if we have really low quality of the surface, maybe some scale imprints or something like this. And this problem increases if this low quality surface is in tension during the bending process. Then on the third picture, you have an example of properly prepared cut edges. So before bending, the edges were prepared with the angle grinder. We have almost no imperfections which would act as a crack initiator. And the last, so the fourth picture presents the microstructure of CMAX 1000 grade, which was cut with the plasma cutter. This microstructure is something that we can only see in the laboratory during the microstructural observations. And even though the, this heat affected zone is really narrow, the hardness in this region can increase drastically due to the thermal input during the cutting process. So the hard microstructure is typically much more prone to cracking compared, uh, compared to the base material. So if possible, we recommend to remove the heat affected zone region when bending steels with really high hardness. One example could be SIDUR 450 or SIDUR 500 grade. And if possible, you should remove the heat affected zone at least on the area of the bent radius. We also have to point out the importance of the multi-step bending. So the multi-step bending can be a good practice when you are bending still with really high hardness or let's say extremely high hardness. In this case, the movement of the punch is not continuous, but consists of more steps. So on this diagram, we have more than 15 steps to bend the plate to, to the final angle of 90 degrees. 
So the bending speed here, which was used, was approximately one millimeter per second. And when the punch makes the five millimeter step, we wait approximately 20 or 25 seconds. And we are repeating this process until we reach the final angle. And I think that this type of bending is not necessary to be practiced on CMAX grades, but we recommend to use this on very resistant SIDUR 500 grade. This part of the webinar will give you just some instructions for the constructors of the banded parts. So when we are doing the modeling of the parts, especially of the, of the parts which are made of high strength steels, it is important to minimize the stresses in the corners. So these are the places where two bands come together. And this can be effectively done with so-called corner trimming, or it is sometimes also called the edge relief trimming. So when cutting flat pattern sheet metal, we make small holes at all those line intersections. And typically the diameter of this hole is or should be approximately the same size as the thickness of the plate that we want to cut. So at the end of this presentation, we will try to give you some practical examples how to choose the proper bending radius. For CMAX steel grades, you will find the bending recommendations tables in our technical data sheets. And for each grade, so CMAX 700, 900, 1000, you will find the appropriate bending parameters. So punch radius, I will just repeat once again, punch radius, not the diameter, and die opening width. Let's make one example with this slide. If you are bending CMAX 700 grade with the plate thickness of 18 millimeters. So let's, let's be, we can say that the bending direction will be in transverse to the rolling direction. And this is also called the easy way bend. So what we do the first, first you calculate the punch radius. You just multiply the thickness with the factor which is written in the table. So in this case, it is number two. So the punch radius is 36 millimeters, resulting in diameter of approximately 70 millimeters. So as you calculated the diameter, the same step should also be repeated with the die opening width. You just multiply the thickness with the number seven. As it was already mentioned before, you will also find all the necessary factors for punch radius and die opening width in our technical data sheets. So in this slide, I just made one example of bending SIDUR 400 grade with the thickness of 24 millimeters in the longitudinal direction. And the calculation is, I think, clearly presented. What I want to point out here when we are at the end of the webinar, I would just like to remember all of you about the next webinar, which will be about the CMAX 1100 QL grade. So this is the CMAX grade for special applications where we want high strength to weight ratio of the final structure. And the webinar will be on 9th of November at 2 p.m. I hope yeah, that you will not miss this because there I think we will show you, the, we will present you the main field of use the main properties, and we will also explain the bendability and the weldability of this steel. So thank you very much for, for, for listening. If you have some questions that came to your mind during this webinar, you are free to ask. Andre, please. Thank you, Andre, for this comprehensive knowledge you shared with us. It was very insightful, I must say. So like you said, we will start with the questions. Um, the first one is coming from Wojciech. And the question is exactly like this. So does heating of the plates before bending has an effect on mechanical properties? 
Okay. As I said during the presentation, the heating is not normally practiced during the the, the bending procedures. But if you preheat the material to 100 degrees C, you can minimize the cracking appearance. But you have to be really careful if you will do the heating over the over the 220 degrees C. Because as it was explained during the cutting and welding webinar, if you go over this temperature, so over 220 degrees C, you can expect the drop of mechanical properties. And this is something that you do not want from the material. So uh, if you will go with the temperatures over the recommended maximum temperatures, uh, you can expect the drop of the mechanical properties, yes. Okay, great. So the next question comes from Peter. What is the difference in bending between 400 and 500 HB grades? Okay, so it is connected with the very, very resistant grades. So the difference between CDUR 400 and CDUR 500 grade is not only in surface hardness. So the surface hardness is directly co correlated with the mechanical properties of the of the steel, so with the yield and tensile strength. And what it means that it was during the webinar, uh, I show you the, the stress strain curve. So the higher the mechanical properties of the material, the higher required bending forces. So it means that there are some differences when you are doing the bending on CDUR 400 or CDUR 500 grade. Mm -hmm. Great. We have one question coming from Mark. Uh, what is the recommended bending speed? Okay. Uh, so the bending speed is something what we can adjust on our bending machines. So from really slow bending speed up to really fast bending speed. What we as a steel producer of high strength, low alloy steels recommend is to use relatively low bending speed. When we are doing the development process of steel, we are also made, making the bending tests. And what we typically use is the speed of one millimeter per second. So this is really slow bending speed. But for, if you have, a, let's say, low thickness of the material and relatively low yield strength, let's say CMAX 700 grade with the thickness of six millimeters, then I think you can, you can go a little bit higher with this bending speed. But uh, at the end, I would just like to, to, to tell you that it is much better to use relatively slow bending speed. Thank you. So, so far we don't have any additional questions. So at this point, uh, I would like to ask our attendees once again to address, to address the, the questions in the chat area. Uh, and we would gladly like to address them if there are any. Seems like there's no further questions. So um, at this point, uh, I would like to thank everyone uh, for attending this webinar. Like Andre said, we are preparing a special webinar. Uh, you will all be invited to this special webinar where we will talk about a, a new CMAX brand. Uh, I mean, CMAX great uh, within the CMAX brand. So um, this is it for today. And Thank you in, in my behalf and Andre, do you have anything would would like to add? I would just like to say thank you for all of you who were with me during the the during those three webinars. And if we will have some new products, so new technologies or some new examples to be shown, uh, we will come together again. So thank you for now.
Thank you and goodbye. Goodbye.